What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Quarantined with LaVelle. Listen, I truly appreciate each and every one of you tuning in, so faithfully tuning in, and those of you all who spread the word, share the uh, information on on Facebook and on YouTube, and even those of you all who go back and watch it uh, later on Facebook and on YouTube, I just want to let you know that I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. Got to give a shout out to a couple of people. First of all, my lovely, amazing wife, LaKenya, who is also an executive producer on the show. She faithfully sits with me uh, helping me pick out guests and helping me write out the questions for the guests, except for today's guest, of course, because he's family, so he's right at home. So I didn't, I didn't even send him the link until right before the show started. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, he's family, so we are happy to have uh, my buddy Jay Will in the house with us today, and we're going to be getting him in just a second. Um, but yes, LaKenya is amazing. She prays for me before every show, and of course, got to give a shout out to, to our son who was born uh, on a Thursday, which is the day of the show. And if you all remember, the last time Jay Will was on, we were talking about Philippians chapter 1, and I was I was live at the hospital the day Emmanuel was born. So definitely a shout-out to Emmanuel. He got a chance to be exposed to Facebook and YouTube uh, a couple of hours into his life. So definitely a shout-out. For him, shout out to my mom, shout out to Mama Betty, of course, uh, shout out to my uncle and my aunt who faithfully share the show with our relatives and friends out of town. So we are national now because we have people down south watching the show, thanks to my uncle. And speaking of my uncle and my aunt, my aunt started a business and her business is our sponsor for this week. Custom Designs by Linda uses ethically sourced jewels and materials that are designed, crafted, and handmade in-house with you in mind. They are a wonderful complement to your elegant ear. Linda sold jewelry for three major companies, but in 2004, she developed a passion for designing jewelry with her customers in mind. So visit customdesignsbylinda.com or call 888-443-7773 to schedule your 20-minute consultation. Custom Designs by Linda, designed with you in mind. So definitely make sure that you go to her website, which is customdesignsbylinda.com, or give her a call at 888-443-7773 and schedule your free 20-minute consultation. She makes her jewelry for men and women. It's not just women's jewelry, and also it's not just for elegant evenings. It's for any any uh, outing that you may have or that you may want to uh, go on, even if it's just a night out to the movies or whatever. She makes this stuff handmade. So make sure that you give her a call because she's going to make sure that you're taken care of. Also, if you want to be a sponsor for the show, shoot me an email at neildownproductions, the number one, at gmail.com. That's neildownproductions1 at gmail.com, and I'll give you information on being a sponsor for the show. All right, we're going to jump right in. Uh, August the 20th 
was the last time my brother was on the show with me, and we were we're we're going through the book of Philippians. It's only four chapters, but he has a very busy schedule, so I have to fit him in when I can. And he was available today, so I thank God for him. Please help me welcome my friend and my brother, Jermaine James, Minister Jermaine James. Yo, what up, what up, bro? How you feeling, man? I feel good, man. I feel good. All is well. I didn't need the title. You, you <laughs> didn't, I didn't need the title, neither did I need my whole name. It's just, <laughs> listen, brother, unlike you, I just, you know, with me, it's just, it's like the Flash, you know? Mm. You don't need to say his whole name. You just throw out <laughs> that, and they know. No, nah, what up, man? I'm excited to be here. What up, everybody? Yes, yes, man. Listen, so we started on the book of Philippians, right? Uh, chapter yeah, one, uh, months ago, actually. <laughs> yeah, we did. And now now we're going to do chapter two, and hopefully we're, we'll finish the book by the year 2024, maybe. I don't know. Why not? That <laughs> works. Why not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so just as a as a as a brief recap, we talked about Philippians chapter one. You all can go back on uh, Facebook or YouTube and rewatch that episode. We gave a lot of of um, uh, history leading up to why Paul wrote this particular book. Um, he was in prison when he wrote the book, and so we're going to go right on into chapter two now. And I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. There we are. All righty. All right. All right. All right. So Philippians chapter two, starting at the first verse, we're just going to jump in. I'll read a few verses. Jermaine, if you have something and you just feel free to stop me and jump right in, I'm just going to kind of read and then we'll just, we'll talk as we read. All right. For sure. All right. Have the attitude of Christ is the sub topic here. And it says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. So, you know, we see here, Paul is admonishing them to work together, to agree wholeheartedly. And he said, that's what's going to make him truly happy. And if you all remember um, the last couple of verses of chapter one, and, and please make sure you remember this, there were no chapters and verses when Paul wrote this letter. Those were added much, much later to help us be able to memorize uh, scriptures, right? So, but when Paul wrote this, it literally was a letter. So it wasn't like he said, okay, chapter one and wrote in chapter two. It was literally one long letter that he was writing to the church at Philippi, right? And toward the end of the, fir of the first chapter, he talked about not being intimidated by his enemies, by, by your enemies. It's going to be a sign to them that you're going to be saved. And then he said, you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but the privilege of suffering with him or for him. And he said, we're in this struggle together. You have seen my struggle in the past and you know that I'm still in the midst of it. So he was telling him, look, I, I, I was going through some things. You all knew about it and I'm still going through those things. And now he shifts over and says, is there any encouragement? Any comfort of love, any any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly. In other words, even as you're going through, you can still agree with the saints of God wholeheartedly. You can still work together with one mind and one purpose. What you think about that, Jay? No, I think that's dope, man. Um, it probably hit me maybe even from a slightly different angle. Um, right. So when I look at this, for some reason, what kind of stands out is the qualifications for unity. Mm. So when you look at how first it was established, um, really salvation was established and the idea that we are serving the same God, 
You know what I mean? I think a lot of times, especially let's say when you use the term God without necessarily putting a name to the title, uh, we can say God a lot of times. I mean, you could just think uh, an artist accepting an award. I would like to thank God. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what people really mean. But I see it as first what's being laid out is exactly which God you're serving. All and right. then it's basically saying, he's saying like, if you're serving this God, then you should be able to agree. Um, mm. I, I've seen people talk about unity a lot and like, hey, we should be walking in unity. And uh, sometimes the tough reality is that, well, we can't walk in unity because we're not the same. <laughs> so mm. it sounds good, but he really laid out like, what God are we serving? And then he talked about, look, look, this unity is about having one mind and one purpose. So in order for the church now to be um, really, um, I guess, properly unified, mm. um, we first have to have one mind and one purpose in Christ. And I think as long as we continue to see that, the, that there is not one mind, some people you know, have different agendas, um, then then that's maybe part of the reason why we don't see unity in the church today. Mm, yeah. And I'm loosely saying we don't see it today. Right, right. Not that it literally doesn't exist, but yeah. when we question it, that may be part of the reason why. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I have a, um, Bob bought the uh, uh, Tony Evans commentary, and he, he made a comment uh, on this particular passage here. He's talking about the example of a of a football team, right? He talked about how, and I don't I don't watch football, but maybe you can relate to this, that a football team is unified, right? Not because every player plays the same position. He said that would be uniformity, right? But a football team is unified because they're operating in harmony to reach the same goal line. Each player it. is playing his position. Right. With the objective of either helping his team score or stopping the other team from scoring. Right. <laughs> so everybody, in other words, everybody is moving in the same direction. Yeah. And, and to that point, I think that's, you know, an added layer, unified, not uniform. But what makes them really unified is that they're going the same place mm -hmm. for the same reason. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's, yeah. That's now. Cool. I, I, I really like the way you set that up because what Paul is about to go into now, I think is, is more, probably one of the most important passages in all of scripture talking about the deity of Christ. So let's kind of jump in here. All right. He says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Or as my wife says, Humble, she says that the H is silent. <laughs> Not surprised. Hey man, it's it's funny, man. She, no offense, woman. I got. She, <laughs> she corrects me every time I say be humble. Uh, uh it's humble. Uh, a lot of the older saints would say that a lot. Be humble before the Lord. Right? Y'all are a very churchy family. <laughs> yeah, y'all are. <laughs> Be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. All right. Then he goes into this, um, and I, I found this out actually later, that this, this part here, you know, in the King James, it says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. That actually was a poem. It was a poem that was written that, that, that helped them to memorize the important fact of the deity of Jesus Christ. So he's going to go into this poem now. He says, you must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare or confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow. <laughs> But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you jump in there, and then we can kind of talk a little bit about this. Yeah, if you could scroll back up for me. Um, no, this is one of my <laughs> favorite chapters, uh, as as you know, which is why I'm on this show talking about Philippians. Because <laughs> uh, you often joke that this is the only book of the Bible I read, <laughs> uh, which is not true. But no, like, so what's really dope about this, to me, uh, it's really life changing, if I'm gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to hear people, you know, use this scripture to actually say the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus, and almost make it seem like because of how glorious he is, right, that we should take on this mind of glory. You know what I mean? Um, wow. Which in our you know, in our humanity, we could do things and we could twist things. And um, and maybe a lot of times just think about ourselves. I've been guilty of that in the past where you you want to be a star. You want to, you know, you just had this selfishness. So what I really like about what this scripture and this passage really addresses is it addresses the true mind of Christ. And you know, when you look at what's set up in, in verse three, you know, it's really literal and it's very easy to understand. Let's say if I say, I'm going to tell you how dope these this uh, verse three and four are. Let's just say I never told you this was in the Bible, like ever. If I just wrote this on a chalkboard for fifth graders, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of yourself, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Who wouldn't understand that? Like, so sometimes I think too with scripture, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this in the context to like strip away the divine nature of scripture or something like that. But I'm saying, like, if we could just take it in its most practical sense, um, it's like, yo, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. That's super simple. And so I love that that connection um to how jesus thought when he had to take on uh the body of a man to come to this earth and he didn't come here as a wealthy man or uh someone seeking attention um he came here in the most humble fashion and, and so i just love the dynamic of like pointing out who jesus is and, and really encouraging us to see that as an example of a way to think it, so, I, I really like what you said about keeping it simple, and I, I don't—I don't think that's a—that's a slap in the face of scripture or anything. I think that should be our approach, right? When you study scripture, yeah. take it, take it at face value. Still study. You're supposed to study, right? You supposed to dig deep. But one of the one of the problems that I see nowadays is everybody wants to be so deep <laughs> that they're drowning, right? They yeah. just they just, they just so, you know, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. It's, it's flat out very, very simple, like you said. And if you wrote this on a chalkboard and somebody didn't know it was scripture, they'd be like, oh, my God, that, that Jermaine is just profound. Exactly. He's amazing, you know, but then they find out make a meme of it. I should make a meme out of it today since that's what we do now. Yeah, hey, you're right. And you, and, yeah, and then somebody be like, why? And then they'll find out in scripture and then they'll be like, eh, well, you know, it's debatable. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it, and it, it really is, though, like to your point, man, it's keeping it simple when when you can and when necessary, right? Like we're, we know that the Bible in and of itself, God is complex, right? Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes, to your point, we try to make everything difficult and complex just to make ourselves feel important. Mm. When a lot of times you could take a scripture like this and literally change someone's life just by giving them the word of God in the way that it was intended 
um, in the way that it was um, intended to to connect with them and, and just say, yo, like, look, we are to think like Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And he didn't come to this earth um, full of himself. Literally, he didn't come here full of himself because he was half man. He was all God, but he added something on. He this This is what this scripture is saying is like, he, imagine this. Imagine you could be anything you wanted to be. Mm. Come on, man. Come on, bro. If you had to, if you had to go to another world, if it was Earth Two, and you went to <laughs> Earth Two, and it's like, all right, Lavelle, you gonna go to Earth Two, but you get to be whoever you want to be in Earth Two. Mm. I don't know about you. I would probably choose to be the dopest dude there. Okay, right. let me just be real. <laughs> but that that's not what Jesus did, right? And and so we have to deny ourselves and our flaws and, and people like me who would go to earth two and be swagged out and, you know, killing the game, mm-hmm. but, you know, not saving any souls. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so much packed into here. It says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had, right? The King James says, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, Right. Though he was God. Now, we can stop right there because some people get confused on, you know, Jesus, is he God? Is he the son of God? Right? People get a little confused there. But son of God does not mean God birthed him. Right? It doesn't mean that there was ever a point in existence where where he, Jesus didn't exist. Right? He, he as Jermaine said, he's 100% God. What, what happened at the, the birth, the immaculate conception, right, of Jesus Christ was that it, it, wasn't a, it, it wasn't that divinity was taken away. It was that humanity was added. So you have 100% God, and then to that is added humanity. So now Christ, Jesus, now he has two natures which is unlike us. We have, we have one nature, you know, from a natural standpoint, but he had two natures. So that means any question you ask of Jesus, you have to ask it twice, right? So did Jesus get hungry? As man, yes. As God, no, right? Did Jesus get, get uh, tired? As man, yes. As God, no, right? Was Jesus uh, omnipotent? Right? Did he did he have all power? As God, yes. As man, no. And we see that in this passage here. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. He didn't come down broadcasting. Dun, 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 everybody, you know, we were, we were watching Aladdin the other day, and when uh, Prince Ali came into town, they had this big song and dance. Make way for Prince Ali, right? all this big song and dance. That's not how Jesus came, right? He was born in a little small town, right? An insignificant town, some would say, right? In a stable, laid down in a, a horse trough, you know. Now, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because I did something on purpose to you. As you can see at the bottom, it says Minister Jermaine James. You've already rebuked me. You was like, I don't need the title, right? Now, you are a minister. You're an ordained minister, right? But that's not something like you call, you didn't call me and say, uh, make sure you put Minister Jermaine James. You were very humble. I could have just put Jermaine. I could have just put Jay Will, but you were very humble. Just to irritate you, I didn't even abbreviate minister. I wrote the whole word out just to irritate you, my man. And you successfully did that because when I looked down at the screen, I was like, what in the world? (laughs) Well done. (laughs) Well done. But, you know, Christ didn't make this big grand, you know, announcement or whatever trying to prove to anybody who he was. And then notice it says, um, instead, verse 7, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave or servant 
and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So we have something here, uh, I think in Greek, I think it's called the, 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 uh, the kenosis, where he voluntarily emptied out some of his divine privileges. Now, we still see some of his divine privileges in action. The Bible talks about how as Jesus, even as a man, he knew the thoughts of others, right? He, um, I believe it was Nathaniel, was off by a tree, and Jesus was nowhere near. When Nathaniel came, Jesus told him exactly what he was doing at the exact time he was doing it. But because he was in a human form, he physically couldn't be everywhere at the same time. That's what it means by that he, 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 he voluntarily gave up some of his divine privileges and took on the humble position of a slave or a servant, right? And as a, as a human being, he was obedient to God the Father, and he voluntarily died on the cross. Did you want to jump in there? Um, no, I think, I mean, as far as that part, to me, you kind of summed it up well. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, especially with me and you, with these, um, we would never get past we ain't even at verse 10, really. <laughs> so I don't want to, um, you know, I think I think you said that part well. All right. So going on, it says, therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare or confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Father. So because he was humble as a man, voluntarily, God the Father elevated him to the highest honor. And I was listening to a, um, there used to be a, a show on called uh, the, I can't think of the name, the, mess, the, the Messianic Jew Hour, I believe. And these were Jews that believed in Jesus Christ, that he, that he is, is God. You watched on TV? No, it was a radio show. It was, it was a radio show. But I, but I want it. Don't, don't push me now. <laughs> Interesting guy, bro. But he made, he made a statement here um, where it says that he gave him, it didn't say it gave him, that he gave him a name above all other names. It says he gave, and gave him the name, and he says in in when when Paul wrote this in Greek, that the 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 term that the phrase the name, that the Jews knew exactly what he was talking about. It was the same name that God the Father gave to Moses when Moses asked him, "Who shall I say sent me?" And the in English is translated, I am that I am, which means the self-sufficient one, right? Jesus actually used that term in John chapter 8. If you go to John chapter 8, verse 58, uh, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. He used the name that's above every other name, the name that was so sacred to the Jewish people that they wouldn't even write it out all the way. <laughs> they would use what was called a tetragrammation. They wouldn't even spell the name out all the way, right? But it says that he gave Jesus the name above all other names. In other words, he was saying, Paul was saying here, and the Jews understood exactly what he was saying, I am that I am. I'm the self-sufficient one. I'm the, 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 the ever-present one. I'm the one who has always existed. So because he humbled himself, God the Father exalted him and gave him that name, which is above every other name. And at that name, verse 10 says that every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. Under the earth. He covered every, every, there's no room for error there, right? And every tongue con uh, con confess or declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
Yeah. Um, I think the importance here is just really understanding who Jesus is. You know, um, a lot of people struggle with like believing in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because uh, even, you know, people struggle with believing in God. Mm-hmm. But my thing is like, something is your God. I, I remember when I was in college and, you know, growing up in church, you know, you go through a period of your life where it's normal for people to believe in Jesus. Mm. And, you know, in your community, your church, you know, your school, uh, it was just a normal thing growing up. Yeah. It wasn't even something you questioned. Um, I got to college and that was the first time I started hearing people talk about, when I say other religions, I'm talking about everything from worship, worshiping a cat to a tree to whatever. <laughs> and wow. You know, Hey, I, I sat in this class Um, it was a marketing research class and, um, you know, every, the the professor actually, he was an atheist and he went around the the class and asked everybody, you know, what they believed in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I heard it all. I literally heard some people is the universe. Some people is the trees, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was like that day I realized it doesn't matter what you believe in or what you don't believe in. You believe in something like, Mm -hmm. Something is your God. So even people, think about this. For the person who sat behind me, I think might have been the one that said tree. Like they worship the trees or nature or something. Think about it. You struggle with believing in the divinity of Jesus Christ, but you don't struggle to believe in the power of a tree. Like, I guess my point is like sometimes we fight so hard not to believe in God, not to accept Jesus for who he is Mm -hmm. and what he did, that we actually unknowingly grab hold to something that's actually a lot harder to believe. So it's like, you know how hard I would have to convince myself like to believe that trees represent God? Like... (laughs) I mean, I've seen trees uh, all my life. I've I have trees all around my house. <laughs> mm-hmm. One of them was knocked down by lightning uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> um, I trim the tree. Like, there's nothing that these trees are doing. It it would just be such a struggle to believe that I woke up this morning, and I'm in good health, and my life is blessed because of a tree. <laughs> Wow. I I have a book. One of my favorite authors, the late, great Dr. Norman Geisler, he wrote a book called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. And in the book, basically, he just kind of lays out how it's, it's easier to believe that there's a God. When you look at all the evidence of of um, the universe, the uh, uh, biology, uh, physiology, physics, you know, everything had to be so perfectly aligned and precisioned that with, without there being a God, the chances are, are, I can't remember the number, it was like 10 to the, to the, like, 261st power. So just to give a perspective, that's a one with 261 zeros behind it. Wow. If you took the amount of time that the universe has even been here, whether you believe in young earth or old earth, that amount of time doesn't even exist. So for you, for, for, for somebody to, you know, I have a, actually a guy that I work with, he's an atheist, right? And he's a proud you know, atheists. And, and, you know, we dialogue a lot and debate a lot. And, you know, I, I just told him one day, I was like, brother, it just takes way too much trouble <laughs> for you to not believe in God. It's like you're fighting so hard to not believe in God that you're ignoring the evidence. So I agree with you there, man. It's, you know, I remember Marvin Winans actually said he was, uh, 
one of his drivers, he was on his way to a concert and the, the guy said, well, you know, I like your music. He said, but I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't worship God. I, I worship plants. And Marvin Wine has asked him, he's like, so what, he said, what happens when the plant dies? He's like, I get another plant. <laughs> it's a tree. It's a tree. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, we, people struggle to not believe in God, but all right. But Jesus is God, and he's proven it, and we're going to move right along here. All right, let's see. Verse 12, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. Wow. <laughs> that was a mouthful there. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to go back up a little bit here. He... I mean, you could jump in if you want, but I mean, I think it was pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I think for me is verse thirteen, and okay. for the record, I haven't seen the screen in the last twenty minutes. I don't. My oh, my no. screen has been frozen, so uh, oh, I think that's sorry. my phone. So it's no big deal. It's not your fault. It's, it's my fault. I'm just letting you know. Okay. And anybody watching, if I look like that, I am on track with the screen. Then <laughs> please believe me, it's the complete lie. Um, that's why I keep looking down at my phone. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, verse 13 uh, is really what st sticks out to me personally. Mm -hmm. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Mm. The reason I think that's important is one of the aspects of Christianity that I, that I think not just Christians, but non-Christians also struggle with is the idea of righteousness and holy, right? And doing good. We know that in our humanity, that we're not perfect, that we'll make mistakes. And so some people feel like, you know, let's just take like the term goody two, goody two shoes. Okay. So people can be actually offended by someone who does good. On the surface, you would think it doesn't make sense. Um, but people get offended when someone does good and seems to think or act as if they can't do bad, or sometimes it's not them. Sometimes you're mad at them because it's you, because you're mad that they're trying to do good or better for their lives, and you don't think you can do that good. Mm. So I, to me, this is some great news. Yeah. The great news is we know that in our, in our own humanity, like, no, we can, we can never achieve that. Like, um, we aren't self-righteous. We are righteous because of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are saved because of him. Well, yes. we're only saved when we repent and confess our sins, which is proof that we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So I guess the good news is that God is working in you and giving you the power to do what pleases him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you look at all the instructions that Paul gave that's packed within the scriptures that you just read, it could be overwhelming without God. All right. It'd be like, wow, how could I ever become a better person because I struggle with A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. um, or what makes them think they're so special or whatever? It's like, no, you know, the thing, the beauty of Christianity is I don't think I'm so special. I actually think that God is so special that he could accept us all. Me mm -hmm. and my sin and my flaws, 
um, turning them over and repenting um, to him, uh, turning away from them, and you have the power to do the same. Um, and it's, again, for me, this chapter makes me think about the struggles that people have as it relates to Christianity that I don't know that they have as it relates to other things. Mm. Um, you know, when I look at the season that we are, you know, we, we've been in this year, obviously in an election year, um, I've seen many people say, go vote, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen this plenty of times and, and have no hesitation about challenging other people to do the same, right? Mm -hmm. No, no challenge there. But I don't know why we struggle when people challenge us in our lives to do mm. something. Wow. If you were if you replace the word vote with pray, it would offend mm. so many people. I'm and I mean literally, wow. if you just look at the exact same thing, vote and you look at pray. Look at the way people approach uh voting and how we said it and the commercials and the t-shirts and the stickers. And if we said pray, people would be like you shouldn't be that judgmental. You shouldn't mm. be pressuring people to do that. That's not right. And so it's just interesting to me the way that we choose to struggle with accepting the gifts of God, um, but we don't apply that to everything. Wow, man, <laughs> that that was that was really good. Um, yeah, yeah, you you summed that up very 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 well. That was that was excellent. Um, so so uh, let, let me let me let me deal with something real quick. Um we we let me go back up. I'm sorry. Let me pull up the uh verse 13 was the one you read, but I want to go up one more verse to verse 12. Uh dear friends, follow my instructions. Uh, okay, and then he says, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Why? Because God is working in you, as you said giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now, I do want to make a statement here that this is not saying, this is not saying that we work for our salvation, right? We do not work for our salvation. We're saved because of, because of our faith in Christ and through his grace. So grace and faith, that's how we're saved, right? We're not saved because we work, right? But he says, work hard to show the results of your salvation. We work because we're saved, right? That's why, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, let's use Paul for an example, right? He was vehemently against Christianity. Fighting in the tooth and nail, he literally was, was holding the cults of the people who were murdering other Christians. When he actually got saved, he was on his way to Damascus to kill more Christians. But when he got saved, he went just as hard for Christ as he did against Christ. And I think that's his point here. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obey God with deep reverence and fear. Why? Because God is the one that's working in you, and he's giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So it's not by your power, it's not by your might, but it's by the Spirit of God. Amen. I felt the preaching moment there. <laughs> you definitely preach. No, that's a good word. Um, when you think about that, it's like, well, you know, again, think about in Psalm, is it 39 and 4, delight yourself in the, in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. To delight means to align with to take pleasure in what, what he takes pleasure in. And even as I look in it, the, the verse you just brought out, um, it's that, hey, why would I want to do what God wants, you know, to happen to please him, right? Why well, always got to do that? Well, in the earlier scripture, we already learned that the mind, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus, right? So again, if you're thinking like him, you want what he what he wants. And so I think when you make the connection to the earlier scripture, it really is laying out that the idea here is really in your mind. And then we know in Romans, it talks about, you know, being, you know, transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
lives. Yeah. And so I don't think as believers we can ever get away from the need and the importance of renewing the way we think. So if you find yourself, you know, struggling just to think clear, you know, struggling just to be inspired or empowered or motivated uh, to live for the Lord, you know, sometimes we trying to fix all type of stuff. You you're trying to get a new boyfriend, new girlfriend, you trying to mm. get a new job. And, and sometimes you just need to change your mind. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? The man of God <laughs> says, if you want to get married, just change your mind. <laughs> that's not, not what I said, but yeah, okay, ah. that'll work too. You need a, you need a mind change. Mm, they, right. hit me up, they hit me up every so often and tell me my car needs an oil change. Mm. Sometimes we need, sometimes it, it's like we need if a check mind light just went off on in your forehead, then yeah, maybe you would that. get your life right. Did you walk, could you imagine walking around with a check mind light on your Ooh, forehead? I, man, you need to do a uh, what is it called? I don't know. You know, I'm, now I'm old now. I done turned 70. What are those old videos? The me <laughs> the me meme, meme? Is that what it's called? It's called a meme. Okay, because my wife says me, me. So maybe she's old. But uh, <laughs> check I'm mind old. light. I love that. I love that. I love that. We have to have the mind of Christ. And literally, that's what this entire chapter is talking about, because these next few verses, uh, he's getting ready to deal with two people, uh, Timothy and Epaphroditus, right? I'm probably messing my Epaph man's name up. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he's going to deal with these two people who had the mind of Christ. So this whole chapter literally is talking about changing your mind, right? We yeah. we have a we have a certain mindset that we have and we just like to do things the way we like to do them. We like to get offended by the things that we like to get offended by, you know, whether it's a election, <laughs> whether it's a, 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 a pray shirt <laughs> or whatever, we just, we, we have this, this thing where we just, we want to do it our way. But the word says to let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, you know, humble man. servant, servitude unto God, right? Helping people, building up the kingdom of God, right? You know, if, 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 we should be, if I got a call that they were giving away unlimited free 4K Ultra HD 80-inch TVs at Best Buy. I'm about to leave the show and go there now. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, exactly. The, that's the case. Why would I go get mine and not tell anybody else? Mm. I'm going to first tell my family and my friends, those closest to me. But then after that, is if they're unlimited, I'm going to tell everybody that I can. But we don't have that mind when it comes to Christ. We don't want to tell people about Christ. Because now, and I, I'm, actually I want you to touch on this a little bit. I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. But you and I, you and I have had numerous conversations about the advent of social media and how social media has given people this certain boldness now right so everybody is just talking about whatever they, people can come on your post and tell you that you are flat out wrong stuff that they would never have done in your face <laughs> they're now emboldened to do on social media so in a sense i think social media it, it can be a we can use social media as a witness for christ which is what i'm doing through this show uh, what you do through uh, Inspire God's People, the podcast, right? But but on the flip side of that, it can also be a hindrance. I'm going to just let you talk about that for a second. And I'm sorry for throwing you on the spot there, but I know we've had conversations about how social media can, can embolden people the wrong way. First of all, I'm, I'm never on the spot. Um, when you... So you got to understand when you're in the word, it ain't, you can't, come on, brother. You should know of all people. No, I'm, just, I'm just joking. Um, 
for those who know me and me and Lavelle joke like this all the time. I'm not, I promise I'm, I'm listening to the scriptures. I'm not arrogant. <laughs> and, um, there and off the air. All right. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm also not off. I'm not caught off guard. Seriously. Right. Um, here's the thing. Social media is a lot like money in my opinion and where it offers a certain freedom. And what I, what I mean by this is, you know, a lot of times in life, we're not really being who we are. Like, and, and sometimes that's through insecurity. So, you know, if you're broke, maybe you're not being yourself because, you know, you are not confident enough to be yourself knowing that you don't have money. So mm -hmm. an injection of $2 million in your bank account would give you the freedom to be you. That's mm -hmm. why the first thing some people will say is like, what would you do if you had a million dollars? It'd be like, walk out on my job. See, the thing is, they've wanted to walk out on their job the entire time. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have the freedom to be who they wanted to be. So they had to act like they liked this job. They had to come to work every day and talk about the small talk that you want to talk about. But really, they don't like you. They never mm. liked you as their boss. And they never would have worked there had they had freedom. Mm. Social media is like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a temporary type of freedom because the freedom only occurs when you're in this place. So that's why you can have people that maybe you work with them or you go to school with them or church with them. And you see them on social media and it's like, wow, I didn't even know you talked like that or I didn't even know you did that or that. And it's because social media a lot, you know, to me, I call it the matrix. There's some good things in the matrix, <laughs> um, but it allows certain people to be free. So like to the point of people who always want to argue on your post or something, mm -hmm. this is a person that's always wanting to be argue, wanting to argue. Mm -hmm. They just have never been free. They've never been in an environment where they were free enough to be themselves. Some people are mad about everything and want to argue about, you know, just everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, these are people who always wanted to argue. So to me, when I think of money or when I think of social media, the real question comes back to me is who will you be when you're free? Mm. When you're mm -hmm. free to be exactly who you can be, who is that person? And that's who you really are. And if that person is not a reflection of something that you actually can be proud of, then that's where these scriptures help guide us. And like verse three says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others, right? Mm -hmm. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Those are, that's why scripture becomes the guideline. And you see in this scripture where it says, what? Take on the mind of Christ. So mm -hmm. because we know that if I serve my flesh and I get freedom in my flesh, what did I say I would do earlier if I went to earth too? I would be swagged out. The flies got air. Y'all wouldn't know what was going on because <laughs> it would be up to me and nobody would be on my level. But that's why I have to then take on the mind of Christ. And then like verse 13 does, do what pleases God. Allow him to work in me to change my mind so that instead of doing what pleases me, hopping on social media, arguing with people or stunting on mm, people or whatever, mm -hmm. I can allow him to work on me so that I can do what pleases him with my freedom. Yes, man. That's salvation. That's, that's it, man. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to go on now um, and wrap up this chapter. So there are two more sections, and each section talks about a specific per person. So this first section, starting in verse 19, this is what Paul said. I'm just going to read it, and we'll just briefly hit on it. If the Lord Jesus is willing, I hope to send Timothy to you soon for a visit. Then he can cheer me up by telling me how you are getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and not for what matters to Jesus Christ. But you know how Timothy has proved himself. Like a son with his father, he has served with me in preaching the good news. I hope to send him to you just as soon as I find out what is going to happen to me here. And I have confidence from the Lord that I myself will come to see you 
soon. So here we see Paul admonishing them because they they already they knew Timothy already. We we established that. Go back and watch the the first uh, our recap of chapter or our teaching on chapter one. They knew who Timothy was, so they already knew that he had the character of Christ. And you know these scriptures, because at, at first I was just gonna I wasn't gonna read them. I was just gonna kind of skim over them. But the Bible says that all scripture is inspired by God. So even though I don't know, there is I don't know. I don't know if you know prophet, but uh, I don't know if Paul knew he was writing scripture, or did he just think that he was writing this letter to the church at Philippi, or did he actually know that two thousand years later there's going to be two light skinned dudes on Facebook and YouTube teaching on this, <laughs> right? So I don't know. Uh, I don't. Did you have something you wanted to say about that prophet? No, I I don't know why. I don't even know why you brought it up. I have no idea. I don't know how to answer that question at all. My, my, my point was, uh, when Paul was writing this, this seemed very personal, right? It doesn't seem like this applies to us. He's just talking about Timothy, his son in the faith, him sending him there. But I believe all scripture is inspired so that somehow, some way, we can get something out of it. 2,000 years after it was written. Right. Oh, most definitely. I, I think, you know, first of all, I mean, he said it. It's like a son and a father, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's me, you know, you being, you talked about your son to start, start this show, right? Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, he's laying out the blueprint of how a father raises and teaches a son to take over something. Mm. So imagine that, you know, you're building something and we see a lot of people, a lot of men struggle with this. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to build something. They want their kids to, you know, their son and to take over the family business or, or this or whatever it may be. Um, but a lot of times they haven't necessarily spent the time and the effort and the energy pouring into their son the way that Paul poured into Timothy, mm -hmm. spending the time with him in such a way that Paul talked about Timothy and said, you know, which mm. means this, if you're talking about Emmanuel to me and you use the term, you know, that must mean that I've seen you spend time mm. and put the effort and energy in with him to the mm. point that it's not even questionable. And so to me, right, if I was a father, I would be thinking, man, if I wanted my son to take over my business one day, I should be able to say to some people, you know, which means mm -hmm. I should be putting in some time and then I could look at what was the dynamic of Paul and Timothy's relationship um, because there clearly was, the, this is the way that, you know, Paul as the father in this example looks at his son, but also the obedience of Timothy speaks to his admiration for Paul. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, sometimes people look for that obedience from their children and they haven't put in that time to teach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Paul put a lot of time and effort into preparing Timothy. It's really the word I'm looking for mm -hmm. is the effort that it takes to prepare a son to one day take over. You see these same type of dynamics when Joshua takes over for Moses. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens in, in the book of Joshua is that you know, it literally says that the people viewed him with the same respect that they had for Moses. Mm. And when you put in that time and that effort, like Paul did with Timothy, um, the church in Philippi, I'm assuming, would respect Timothy the same way because the way Paul talked about it was like, you know. Mm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to grab out of that. Yes, sir. All righty. Let's see here. We're going to go to verse 25. Meanwhile, I thought I should send Epaphroditus back to you. He is a true brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier. And he was your messenger to help me in, in my need. I am sending him because he has been longing to see you, and he was very distressed that you heard he was ill. And he certainly was ill. In fact, he almost died. 
But God had mercy on him and also on me so that I would not have one sorrow after another. So I am all the more anxious to send him back to, uh, excuse me, so I am all the more anxious to send him back to you, for I know you will be glad to see him, and then I will not be so worried about you. Welcome him in the Lord's love and with great joy, and give him the honor that people like him deserve. For he risked his life for the work of Christ, and he was at the point of death while doing for me what you couldn't do from far away. That actually concludes the chapter, but a lot of, again, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, one of the things that kind of jumped out to me is that God is sovereign. God is in control. This man got sick. Now, I know you got some people that believe that you can speak it and, you know, somebody is sick and you can just, you know, everybody saw that video, the, uh, the Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland, Corona be gone, you know. He, you blowing on it, and he was actually spitting. <laughs> it was people there, too. But, uh, you know, it's like God is in control. This man almost died. If the great Apostle Paul who wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament, shouldn't he have been able to just touch his head and healing instantly came? No, because he knew that it was God who was in control. God is the one who brings healing. And he actually said that. He said, uh, but God had mercy on him. And he said, and he had mercy on me so that I wouldn't have one sorrow. So in other words, this brother is dear to me. Now, in the first few verses, verse 25, he talked about how he was a true brother, a co-worker, and a fellow soldier, right? And he talked greatly of him. And if he had died, it would have hurt Paul tremendously. So, Paul was giving glory to God. And I think that's what we have to be very careful to make sure that we always give glory to God. Can God heal? Absolutely he can. But we have to give God the glory in every situation that we go through. No doubt. Only, only thing I will add is that I love that Paul laid out, give him the honor that he deserves, that people like mm -hmm. him deserve. I think sometimes we struggle to give credit where it's due, man. Some people um, have risked a lot, have sacrificed a lot. And when people do that, don't hesitate to show love. Don't hesitate mm -hmm. to give honor where it's due. And again, if I'm going all the way back up to verse 3, verse 4, where it says, think um, higher of others than you do of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking like that with the mind of Christ, it'll be easy to give people honor especially when they deserve. Mm, amen. Well, my brother, that was in, that was the end of chapter two. We got to come back and do chapter three. But before we go, I just want you to just kind of <clears throat> give an overall summary of what chapter two means to you. I know Philippians is definitely one of your favorite books in the whole Bible. And I'm glad that we have the opportunity to kind of go through it and break it down. Um, just a little little bit of revelation that God gave us. You know, hopefully somebody out there is receiving it. And, um, you know, I'm going to let you just go ahead and just kind of kind of recap what, what, what does this chapter mean to you? Well, I really will sum it up with the verse. Is it, is it verse 7 that says, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus? Mm. Um, you know, ultimately, um, there's a lot of, you know, characteristics and a lot of times we want to uh, maybe look at the bible on the surface and say you know jesus wants me to be rich or famous and um you know i, I hear a lot of people try to take these scriptures to mean so much natural stuff mm -hmm. but ultimately what we should be doing above and beyond anything else is really taking on the mind of christ and humbling ourselves Finding a way, like, again, trust me, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Um, I've struggled a lot. I have many flaws in my personality, many things that I have to constantly grow from. Um, but the blessing is I do become better, you yes. know, and I, I do. I do grow. Um, and again, every when you grow, it doesn't mean you won't ever need to grow again. You know, when I would 
when I was in first grade, I actually graduated and went to second grade. And All before right. I knew it, I was in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And think about the gap between the first and the eighth grade. It doesn't mean that you don't need to keep growing, but the reality of it is between the first and the eighth grade, give yourself some credit. You learned a lot. <laughs> so I think, you know, one of the things for me is like, I'm not afraid to recognize growth in myself because, hey, it's, when you start off and you, you're not that great, <laughs> Mm. Like and you, and you get all right. It's like there's a big gap between not that great and I'm all right. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm all right makes you better or anything than anyone else. So ultimately, what I'm saying is take on the mind of Christ. But in order to do that, you don't have to deny the fact that you're human. You don't have to deny the fact that hey, I have grown. Like there's nothing wrong with saying you've grown while still recognizing that you have growing to do. And that's really the Christian journey. Um, accepting salvation and going through the process of this life and the journey and becoming better and becoming better than that. Mm. And ultimately, if you're living to please God, you will make mistakes in your humanity, but you'll do some pretty cool things helping other people and helping yourself along the way. Amen. Well, brother, it was a pleasure and honor going through the scriptures with you. But before we go, yesterday you hit a landmark with your show. So can you just tell us a little bit about your uh, podcast, which is absolutely amazing? I'm not just saying that because I'm on the podcast sometimes, but I really actually love the podcast. I listen to, you know, some people may just only listen to the episodes they would be on. I listen to every episode. So I love your podcast. Um, you all can see at the bottom of the screen, you can go to the website, inspiregodspeople.com. But I'm going to let you just talk about the landmark that you hit yesterday. Yeah, on the website, inspiregodspeople.com, hit the drop down box and select podcast. And you can actually listen to every single show, but you could also check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music or podcasts or whatever they have now. Uh, these sites change all the time. Stitcher, it's everywhere. But I'll tell people all the time, worst case scenario, just Google Inspire Guys People to Podcast and you will be able to listen to every single episode. You can actually listen to it in Google, like mm -hmm. right from the Google search. You can listen to the podcast. It's a very interesting experience. You should wow. try. Um, yeah, man, we hit 100 episodes. Um, our 100th, really episode 100. We've done more than 100 episodes is actually our 111th but officially episode 100 by title. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, Inspire Guys People, where we balance faith and business to guide you to your purpose. Uh, the show is about inspirational self-development. Um, it's a little funny, it's a little serious, um, but it's always inspirational. Um, and reaching 100 episodes, going 111 weeks in a row uh, mm -hmm. without a break, mm -hmm. That's the win right there for me is consistency. That's from a personal standpoint, that's what it represents. It represents that I set out to do something two years ago and I told myself, do it for 12 weeks and see if, if it works out, if people actually listen. And, you know, every month we probably average uh, 15 different countries a month uh, with people wow. listening and uh, thousands of people have heard the show and it's continuing to grow and I'm humbled by it. I appreciate every person who've ever taking the time to listen but what i'm really proud of is that i've been getting more and more people every single week who are uh, people who are telling me that it's actually helping um change their lives and, and how they view uh faith and business so inspire guys people man man congratulations my brother uh, I, that's a huge accomplishment um this is Thank episode you. uh 26 i believe <laughs> man so that's pretty good yeah, so you know, I'm 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 one quarter of the way where you are now, my brother. So and by the grace of God you'll never catch me because that <laughs> would mean that I had to stop for 75 <laughs> weeks <laughs> for, you, for you to catch me. So Man, yeah. he went on sabbatical. No, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's just keep grinding them out. No, I know I'll take a break at some point, but uh right now, man, I'm I wanted to get to 100 before I even considered a break, and I'm not considering a break right now. So, All right. Let's see what happens. My brother, bless you, man. I truly, truly appreciate you and thank God for you. Um, 
awesome Bible study. I've learned a lot from you as always, and um, we'll get together hopefully sometime soon, and we'll knock out chapter three and then knock out chapter four, and we went through the whole book of Philippians. No doubt, man. I appreciate you, bro. Keep doing your thing with the show, man. Um, you know, again, you started this, and I don't know. I prophetically, may, maybe, maybe we want to hope for some inaccuracy with you, but we still quarantined in, in November, so uh, you, you doing something right, my brother? All right, all right, yes, sir, yes, sir. All right, bless you, man. All right, all right. Listen, please, everybody, make sure, make sure, make sure that you check out J Will's podcast. Go to www.inspiregodspeople.com. Or like he said, just type in Inspire God's People, the podcast, on Google. And somewhere on there you're going to find it. It's on pretty much every platform. Make sure you listen. So it really is awesome. Um, he talks about business. He talks about faith and how to have a balance between the two is really, really amazing. And I, I really want you all to check it out. You can go to my website, which is kneeldownproductions.com. I have a link to his website on my website. So if you can't remember Inspire God's People, just go to kneeldownproductions.com and you can click on uh, sponsors and you'll see right there Inspire God's People to make sure that you check out his podcast. And also, don't forget to check out our uh, sponsor, uh, Custom Designs by Linda, my auntie. My auntie Linda is really amazing. I've seen jewelry. She's made some jewelry for my wife. It is phenomenal. It is, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's worth the money. It's really, really good stuff. So make sure. And you can also go, if you can't remember Custom Designs by Linda, you can go to my website. I have a link to her website on my website as well under sponsors. So go to kneeldownproductions.com and just click on sponsors and you will see custom designs by lynda.com or you can give her a call at 888-443-7773 to schedule your uh 20 minute consultation listen i appreciate everybody for tuning in listen make sure you tune in next thursday i have a very special guest um she is a dynamic woman of god and she makes prayer mats but we're going to talk about that next week so make sure you tune in next thursday at 6 30 p.m for another episode of quarantine with lavelle again i appreciate each and every one of you and i thank god for each and every one of you god bless you and i'll see you next time